first things first, Qantas suck. Um, just had to get my speech brought up to me because they delayed a the flight by an hour and then decided to wait an hour on the tarmac, so just needed to get that out a little bit. Um, so yeah, uh, good afternoon. I'll, I'll run you through a bit about the online business model that is Kogan and how we've managed to build a brand, what we're doing with it, and you know exactly what I see as the the well why online kicks ass. Um, to give you a bit of background, my my background is fairly into business, so I've run about 20 businesses. First one started when I was 11 years old, so always always trying all sorts of stuff. And I was doing business systems at Monash, and I did my final semester at the University of Miami. Now, we arrive in Miami, all the international students rock up, we get into our dorms, and we knew that in order for it to be a successful semester, we'd need to buy a bar fridge. So we all, we all gather the next day and make a trip to Walmart. Uh, caught a bus, caught a train, got into Walmart, spent half a day there, found a little bar fridge, um, then caught the train, caught the bus and got back to our hotel. We were buggered, we spent a whole day doing it. Um, but, you know, everything we'd learnt at school and at uni and in any marketing thing we read was, oh, Walmart's the latest and greatest and it's such an efficient business and they're so big and their buying power, this and that. Um, so we thought, all right, we've got a good deal, awesome. So we waste the whole day buying our little bar fridge and the next day we see all the local American kids and they've got FedEx guys delivering their bar fridges. Um, after a few inquiries here and there, we find out not only did they not have to waste a whole day with the whole fridge buying experience, they got the fridge for about half the price. And that made me realize, well, hang on a second, this latest and greatest big buying power, huge brand, huge business model that is Walmart, maybe it isn't so great after all. So um, get back to Australia, resume my job at Accenture, um, you know, go to buy an LCD TV and see that, you know, there's no good value out there. And that's how the Kogan business model was born. I knew that if, you know, people in Australia would start to shop online, would start to buy online, um, then, you know, there's this huge gap in the market. There's no more excuses for, for these huge markups and feeding all the middlemen and you know, kicked off the Kogan business. It started with zero capital and we knew as long as our website looks good and we've got a good offer on there, people will buy. So our first customers were buying with a 45 day pre-sale. Now what makes an online business model so good and why we're seeing this revolution now is because it's not something that was possible 20 years ago. Essentially having an online retail business model allows a manufacturer like Kogan to communicate direct with the end customer. There was a need for all these middlemen, uh, you know, 20 years ago. If you look at our profile page, we demonstrated in a bit of a diagram, but, you know, 20 years ago there, there was the need for all of this, going from a manufacturer to an agent to an importer, wholesaler, retailer, all of that, the communication channels didn't exist. You have each one communicating with one another and then eventually the product makes its way to the end consumer. Today, we've got this great communication tool being the internet. It's no longer necessary to do business how it was done 20, 30, 40 years ago. Any manufacturer, anyone who can make a product, anyone who has a service does not need middlemen. They can get it to the end consumer. At the end of the day, that makes things more efficient. If you make things more efficient, the customer will win in the end. And you know, this is this is the wave that Kogan's riding at the moment. We're not scared of change. The Kogan business model is centered around us believing that there's always a better way. We know that, you know, we'll be doing business in a year way differently to how we will be, how we are doing it now, and we're always looking to we're always looking to improve it. And you know, this whole communication aspect of the internet has seen, you know, there's people used to go to fairs in Asia to source products. 
um, you know, they fly me over there and they invite me every now and then and I get there and I look around and I'm like, well now what? You've got 10,000 products here, there's two or three I'm interested in. Do you have a search function to your five square kilometers of product? Or, or is this a gym exercise? Like, what, what am I doing here? You jump on the internet, you find your book, you've got the technology available to you. Um, so yeah, so that's where, the, that's where the internet fits in. And bottom line is also, there's a reduced barrier to entry. If I were to start Kogan 15 years ago, I'd need a multi-million dollar advertising budget, I'd need a showroom, I'd need millions of dollars worth of stock, and, I'd need to invest 10, 20, 30, 40 million dollars into the business before I could even make my first sale. I started Kogan with zero dollars in the bank account and that means that reduced barrier to entry uh, means there's going to be increased competition which means that customers are going to win once again. So, you know, the whole, the whole online side of things is very exciting and it's definitely where retail's heading. Uh, consumers are getting smarter and smarter and people say to me, they go, well, consumers are smart, so they're after security, so is it safe to buy online? You know, I go into a store, I get the product, so, you know, well, why would someone buy over the internet and risk something with a thousand dollar purchase they haven't seen before? And we're actually getting to the point now where because people are getting smarter, they're realizing that buying online is actually safer. If you walk into a Harvey Norman or a JB Hi-Fi or any other big retailer, do you have any idea at all what their last 10,000 customers thought about the purchase? Do you know, were they happy, unhappy? Were they told fibs by the salesperson? Were they told the truth? Were they happy with the purchase? You know, two weeks after the purchase, two months after the purchase? You know, you're lacking all of this information. And, you know, being the information age, the internet has all that information for you. If you go along to Google and you type in Kogan, you're gonna see if anyone's been upset with what, with what we've been doing with our product offering, have we been telling them the truth. Our customers are essentially like, you know, giving a megaphone to everyone in the shopping center and saying, well, the moment you're not happy, start shouting. Uh, they've got blogs, they've got forums, there's review stuff on our website, you know, all of, all of this sort of stuff. We're an open, transparent business. And this goes back to what I was saying before, how it's giving manufacturers that ability to communicate directly with the end consumer. Um, now, so, you know, you've got the customer benefiting at all, uh, a lot from, from the whole online side of things and the transparency and more information out there. but. The other thing that makes the customer benefit is that the businesses have more information. You can make decisions based on facts rather than emotions. You make decisions based on facts and real information rather than making decisions based on some report that some guy did who didn't even really want to do it, he just wanted to go home. You know, you're not, you're not, you're not, you know, restricted with the information you have. For instance, in our store, we know exactly what everyone searches to get to our store, what they're interested in, how long they spend looking at every single page, what pages make them stay, what pages make them leave, what pages are likely to make them convert, what pages are less likely to make them convert, what key messaging works to our customers. You know, we'll run A-B testing where you know, in one place we'll say the best value TV and in the other we'll say the smartest choice. And then we'll monitor that after 10,000 people have seen it and we'll say, well, what do our customers prefer? What do they react better to? What do they want? We will, you know, we will highlight certain features in a product and then highlight a different set of features, run A-B testing after, you know, 10,000 customers have seen each one of those pages and we get to actually judge it on based on what customers want rather than what someone thinks customers want. You know, traditionally, you have all these marketing firms running all these seminars, round table discussions, they'll put people in the room and say, well, you know, what are you looking to buy? Oh, I'm looking to buy a bottle of water. And then the nine other sheep will say, oh yeah, me too, I'm looking to buy a bottle of water. They'll write it up in a report, give it to an exec, and go, oh, we should import water. Um, so, so it's, the internet gives you the ability to act on exact information and there's tools out there that do that. You know, people don't discriminate when they sit in front of a Google browser. They will type in whatever they are, whatever they are interested in. Um, one second. You know, a perfect example is this. When we, when we decide what products we're going to order, we're deciding 
on that information based on exactly what customers want. If we want to know what proportion of 32-inch LCD TVs we order compared to 42-inch LCD TVs, we go to Google and we make exact judgments based on what customers are actually looking for. And you know that information is proving to be proving to be exact. We know the proportions. We know the trends. We know when they're likely to to request it and when they're not. You know, if we look at heater, air conditioner. Online businesses are are acting on facts and real information. Um, and this is what we're doing all the time when we're deciding what products to expand to, what what products to bring in. And bottom line is because Kogan's acting on really good information, it makes our business more efficient. We're making less mistakes and the customer is the winner. And that's what drives us to the success that we've been seeing. On top of that, the internet's allowing us to create a community. Uh, Kogan isn't a brand you see, Kogan is a brand you feel. We are engaging our customers every single day through Facebook, through Twitter, through blogs, through discussions. When we want to bring out products, you know, we'll go along to Google and we'll say, you know what, a lot of people are talking about these netbooks. Uh, is it just hype or are people actually looking for this stuff? So if we, if we do a search for it, in late 2008, <laughs> Kogan introduced a netbook. Um, it sold out in the first week. We weren't surprised at all. We, we saw the spike in traffic. We saw the actual facts of what people are wanting. We also went onto our blog and we said, hey guys, well, what do you want to see in a netbook? Would you rather a slightly fatter netbook, longer battery life? Do you want more RAM? Do, what operating system do you want? What do you want? Do you want Bluetooth? It'll make it two millimeters thicker and it'll make it 20 bucks more expensive. And people were going on and saying exactly what they want. We designed the netbook that they wanted and it sold out in the first week, as I said, to no surprise. So the whole online channel of retail is allowing a manufacturer to communicate directly with their customers and give people exactly what they want. On top of that, when you look at our advertising, we're not wasting money on advertising. All of our advertising is, is done in a very good manner. All the people that approach me in our business that are responsible for our marketing, that are responsible for our advertising, they know they will have no chance of any budget allocation unless the advertising they come back to me with is targeted, relevant, efficient, cost effective and trackable. Unless it has all of those elements, I will not even look at it. We know based on every single page, every single click, how likely someone is to purchase, what pages they look at, what is the per dollar return on investment of every single dollar of advertising we're spending on. And we ensure that it's always the targeted people, we're, we're ensuring it's always effective and, um, you know, at the end of the day, yeah, it helps us run our business more efficiently, but the customer is the ultimate winner because they're getting a smarter option. They're getting the technology that they want and it's better and at a better price point and better quality than what anyone else in the marketplace has to offer. And, you know, that's what's causing Kogan to be one of the most exciting companies in Australia at the moment. It's why we're we're growing at an exponential rate. It's why we've been able to expand to the UK, um, which was just announced yesterday. And you know, th there's not only smart shoppers in Australia, they're all over the world and we're gonna continue to grow and we wholeheartedly back the whole online business model and we believe it's the future. Um, enough of me talking, I'm gonna open up for a bit of questions um, to see what, you know, anything specific you guys want to know if you want to post it on Twitter, um, we'll have it monitored here as well, so whichever avenue you want to ask through, we're ready.